in the name of jesus everything that is antichrist everything that is anti-destiny roaming around your life i stand under the corporate anointing in agreement with every servant of god here represented and we decree and declare let it roll out of your life right now let it roll out of your life right now let it roll out of your life right now let it roll out of your life right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah the bible says in revelation chapter 3 it says i am he that was dead and now is alive he said and i hold the keys the holder of the key of david the key of david is a mysterious possibility in the kingdom he says and by that key i open a door that no man can shut can i declare the opening of doors listen a door is an authorized point of access if someone comes into your house through the fence he's in your house but he's not welcome because your fence is not the authorized access point jesus said i am the door that is how important doors are but doors and gates can also be barriers they limit access when they are closed a door that is there is a potential for access doors midwife realms your kitchen your living room your bathroom they are separated by walls and separated by doors if you want to midwife or transit from one part of your house to the other you don't walk through the wall you walk through the door but how many of you know that as as powerful as you are you can misplace the key to your door and it can keep you outside for a long time can i declare the opening of doors in the name of jesus the son of the living god every door every gate before you that has remained closed i speak to it now a father be open a father be open career doors be open career doors be open family doors be open financial doors be open in the name of jesus christ son of man can these bones live again it says only down the west it said prophesy to these bones and tell them oh bones hear ye the word of the lord that god will cause flesh and sinews to come upon you but the flesh was there but it was lifeless it says son of man call the four winds and say oh wind breathe upon this lane and they became an exceeding great army i declare let the wind of the spirit blow upon everything dead in your life blow upon everything dead in your life blow upon dead finances dead marriages dead wombs dead organs come back to life by the spirit in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for the sake of time i made a request in the morning we may not have the time to collate them but please lift your prayer requests and your expectation cards can i speak over them please if you have it if it's in an e-version just lift your phone or just stand by faith and for those who are connecting distance is no barrier at all all of the experience centers and then those who are connecting from across the globe this is how powerful god is hallelujah pray in the spirit in one minute a miracle is about to happen to you just do what i'm asking you to do Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 says be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known don't assume that he knows let your request be made known hallelujah hallelujah now keep it lifted please help them I'm about to pray for you and I please want you to believe I want you to believe I'm standing under the corporate anointing here and I want to speak over this keep your hands lifted 
Jesus told us that when the Spirit of God comes, he will testify of him. He does not have any agenda on his own except to reveal Jesus. To reveal him as the way. To reveal him as the truth. And to reveal him as life. Everywhere you see the Holy Spirit, his assignment is to reveal Jesus in his entirety. I want to pray for you right now. Please believe believe in the name of jesus take your mind away from the long-standing issues and let your attention be on jesus in the name of jesus christ shout a loud amen in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead that every prayer request every expectation here lifted in the name of jesus we turn it to testimonies now 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 in the name of jesus christ hear me for someone here is your prophetic word you will not see wind you will not see rain yet your valley shall be filled with water i decree it unto you you will not see wind you will not see rain but your valley shall be filled with water in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for another person here you will experience the mystery of aaron's rod that even though it is not connected to the earth it will still board i decree and declare you may not have any regular advantage but may the holy ghost be your advantage in your office may he be your advantage in lagos in abuja in nigeria in europe in america may he be your advantage in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the lifeless body of jesus is lying in the tomb of joseph of arimathea and my bible says if that same spirit that raised christ from the dead that if that same spirit resides hold on that means anywhere that dimension of the spirit is it raises whatever it rests on anything if it rests on a body it quickens the organs if it rests on finances it compels multiplication if that same spirit that spirit is a razor it does not leave anything at the level it met it if that same spirit i sense in my heart to declare over your finances please listen to me and don't allow anybody lie to you that is not important no there is a prophetic dimension to wealth wealth answers to value it answers to productivity it is true but there is a, a dimension of wealth that comes by the prophetic it says believe in the lord your god so shall you be established believe his prophets so shall you prosper the prophet said by this time tomorrow there was no economic manipulation that would turn samaria to a place of abundance in 24 hours but the prophetic and that by the spirit let me speak over someone's wilderness according to isaiah 32 and verse 15 it says until the spirit is poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest everywhere there is drought even financially i command abundance now abundance through the ministry of mercy abundance through the gift of men in the name of jesus christ and for someone lifting your request i speak to you these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever in the name of jesus my final declaration over your life dead prayer lives dead word study lives dead passion and appetite for the things of god it says that the fire upon the altar it must burn day and night for some of you you came for this conference it's a renewal conference for you because your prayer life 
until you came here was dead or dying word study life dead or dying passion for spiritual things dead or dying it doesn't matter what category by the spirit of the living god we fan your prayer life back to flames we fan your word study life back to flames we fan your passion for god for the things of god for the house of god back to flames in the name of jesus christ wave your hands to jesus wave your hands to jesus as an offering in faith believing it says what things soever ye believe when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them is someone saying thank you jesus thank you for the healing thank you for the new dimension thank you for the flight in the spirit for in jesus matchless name we have prayed god bless you please put your hand down keep standing for one last minute on this final night it's my honor to make one last time an altar call i believe jesus said this about himself he said i am the way that way leads you to reality the truth and finally administers life unto you listen to me please minimize movement in every gathering such as this there are always men and women sent by god the lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved it is the will of god number one that all men be saved and then number two to come into the knowledge of the truth transformation is only a second experience salvation is the first experience in order of priority jesus is speaking to nicodemus in john 3 and 16 and he says for god so loved the world that he gave his then one and only begotten son now we know he's the first begotten among we the brethren he says that anyone whosoever that blessing is for whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life eternal verse 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved listen to me jesus can be a final resting place from every burden every pain you have trusted your life and your destiny to things of lesser power lesser worth lesser value with no verification whether they love you or not give jesus a chance the bible is a compendium of his integrity it is true when he says i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness you can choose to reject jesus but I assure you by the spirit of the living God that he's able to give you a new beginning first spiritually and then by his spirit to redirect the course of your life or perhaps you are here on ground on site or following online and you are saying apostle I remember I've made this call but as it stands now I cannot truly say that my Christian experience is rich enough to speak about he's able to give you a new beginning hallelujah praise the name of the lord it says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart i'm going to make a final call for this session tonight counting one to five i'm only looking for one sincere person who is saying apostle sincerely i want to make it right with jesus i know that he can give me a new beginning my sins can be washed away I can start afresh i'm not ashamed of jesus wherever you are i want you to run and come and stand here i begin my counting now one let's celebrate them as they come two come 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 where would i be if you left me now where would i be come come to jesus where would i be celebrate them as they come for you waited I submit 
to you therefore that the reason why we have so many well-meaning believers but there are no notable dimensions of the possibilities of God captured within our territory is because very few people have paid the price to know him it's costly to know God the price for all of God is all of you it's costly the price for life is death it's costly you have to look away from many things that is the price oh but when you find him then the world begins to look for you when you find him then what you have been looking for begins to look for you when you find him all men seek for you let me quickly share with you the platforms for knowing God you cannot know God outside of these platforms now look up why do I have to teach you the platforms because I want to bring balance to something now look at me there is a side effect when your hunger is not guided unguided hunger is what has delved people into Scientology delve people into witchcraft some sincerely because when you have hunger if your hunger is not guided within the jurisdiction of truth you are going to get into error there are people who it was their hunger for power and for more of God that drove them to the wilderness and they met with demons and met with spirits and came back with encounters that are not of the Christ listen very carefully because if we stop at just marketing a zeal and we do not bring balance to it then we also give satan room to take advantage of the appetite of people there are people who waited upon god seven days dry and what appeared to them was not god because their hunger was wild they started searching the internet for everything superstitious then they see a name that looks like God and they say it's an old Egyptian deity and in their curiosity they start studying and before you know it they have bought books they have bought all kinds of things I must guide your search hunger is dangerous hunger attracts everything God, man, Satan are we together? Years ago, I finished then in Zaria, I finished a program like this and suddenly I saw a group of young guys just came and stood in front of me, you know, and one of them believed that he was an incarnate of one of the saints from the Bible and then the remaining guys were like his protégés, his disciples, with absolute boldness and confidence. He stood in front of me, he said he was sent, you know, because he felt he had a role to play. I could see the sincerity in the hearts of these young people, but I knew they were already in deception. The devil capitalized on their hunger. A preacher preached hunger, but the hunger was not guided. You don't meet God everywhere. There are coordinates that guide your pursuit. And if you are not exposed to it, and your hunger goes on rampage, the devil is ever waiting to quench that test and create one that will not be quenched. Satan is an opportunist. So they tell you you are going to be a prophet and you carry that prophecy and lock yourself for days. Lord, where is the prophetic grace? And Satan begins to speak and you think you are being open to the realm of the spirit and you encounter a grace. You are convicted based on your encounter but there is no basis for you to vest that encounter. And so you can come out from that encounter and mislead yourself and mislead others. Did the Bible not say the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons? It's in your Bible. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart. They don't have to be evil. They are just sincere people who are not guided. There are some of you right now under the sound of my voice, inside and outside, following online. You are probably already delving into that error. 
I have seen people who went to lock themselves to pray because they wanted to know God. And the next thing, they had to take them out to the psychiatry. Have you seen people like that? Because they came up with all kinds of strange experiences. And they believed that everybody had a problem except them. Only for them to wake up and see that they are under drips, they are under medical supervisions, something had happened to them. There are people who had spirits appear to them and lead them to go to places and do things, mimicking the Christ. And at the end of it, listen to me, just because God is mysterious does not mean His ways cannot be vetted. There are indices that can tell you whether this is God or this is not. So that people do not bring... And you know, we live in a world where the moment people create superstition around the things of God, things like God said, or things like this is a vision I had, suddenly we become quiet. No, you can probe into anything using spiritual parameters. I'm not teaching you to go and insult people. I'm not teaching you to go and cause trouble for people. But this is to supply maturity that we can know God constructively in a way and a manner that our lives would demonstrate that we have met the God of the Bible. Paul said there is, as it were, many voices and that none of these voices is without effect. There are people who the voice of death called them. They thought it was the Holy Ghost. They came out of their houses never to return again. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Very quickly, number one, the first platform, the first authorized platform for knowing God is scripture. Write it down, please. The first authorized platform, doctrinally speaking, for knowing God is scripture. Second Timothy, please, chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16. Let's hurry up, we have to pray. Second Timothy, chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16. It says, and that from a child, look up please, thou hast known the holy scriptures. It's not only God who is holy alone, scriptures too are holy. The holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. The Bible says all scripture is in your Bible is given by inspiration of God and that scripture is profitable. Read with me. For number one, doctrine. Number two, reproof. Number three, correction. Number four, instruction in righteousness. The effect is in the next verse. It says that the man of God may be mature. The word perfect there does not mean blameless. It means mature. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This is the assignment of scripture. All scripture, not the one you like. All scripture. Now, please look at me. From a historic standpoint, when you read this Bible that was canonized by a group of people containing 66 books and sold by bookstores like Zondervan and so on and so forth, that is more than, you will find out that there are lots of human imperfections. Theologically speaking, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament was written in a combination of Greek and Aramaic. Are we together now? And according to the principles of translation, there are certain words that um, have multiple meanings. And you will find out that they have a formula that would guide their translating the Bible. And so many things were translated the way they were not accurately translated. There is no doubt that there are human imperfections here. This is why the Bible does not say you should read it alone. You are supposed to read under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And when He, the Spirit, is come, the Bible says, the Spirit of truth, He will guide you. Truth can destroy, even though it is truth. The devil can use truth to destroy you if it is not guided. 
the Bible, Scripture, is the first platform for knowing God. Watch this. That means someone can get born again under your church, under your influence, and you can commend him, you can give him Scripture, and expect that as he studies the Bible, he can know God. What about God is revealed in Scripture? Right, please. Number one, His character. The first thing that is revealed from Scripture about God is His character. Character. Number two, for the sake of time, His methodologies. Every time we study the Bible to know God, these are the two things we are looking for. Number one, His character. Number two, His principles or His methodologies, His modus operandi. The kingdom has its way of operating. So I can judge all things by the character of God that is revealed in scripture. For instance, I find from scripture that God is love. For instance, I find in scripture that God is merciful. So I can judge everything, the prophetic word coming to me, the manifestation of a believer based on the reference of God's character. Everybody say character. There are people all over the internet, I'm not on social media, but there are people all over the internet purporting to be me unfortunately and sadly and they have extracted hundreds of thousands of dollars if not millions of dollars from sincere people. Are we together now? I was shown a platform with over 43 books that were written by Joshua Stellman. I've not written one. Five star ratings. People were rushing. Now, listen, let me tell you. When you, if someone calls you for instance and says, I am Joshua Stellman, can you transfer one million naira for the building of an orphanage? Now, your confusion or your deliverance will be based on your knowledge of my character. Are we together now? Number one, I am so busy. When I'm free, I'm sleeping. So the person who has that time to call you, there are times that those who know me, I don't even call at that time. If someone calls you at that time, you know that is a liar from the pit of hell. There is something about God you can know and you use like a reference. You can judge things and say, no, God does not behave like this. You can have the boldness to judge prophecy. You can have the boldness to vet an operation within a spiritual circle. Listen, the character of God is not the one you know. There is more than the one you know. I'm not talking of a denomination's approach to God. I'm talking of the knowledge of the God of the Bible. Are we together? Everybody say his character. So when Isaiah came to Hezekiah in chapter 38 of Isaiah, he said, Isaiah, I heard from God. Hezekiah, set your house in order. You are not going to leave. Hezekiah said, I respect you, man of God, so long. And he turned to God. There is something I know about God that his mess is not his judgment. I knew every morning. And he said, God, but I can negotiate my longevity. If I die, who will praise you? And God said, ah, this man got me. David knew something about God. Every time God wanted to destroy him, he would sing his things as a song and dance before God and say, Lord, are you not merciful? Music director, sing it. And God would say, what do I do with this man? Finally, he earned the title, a man after God's heart. David. There is something about God we need to know. So that the devil does not steal into your passion and lie to you. When you are broke and failing and things are going bad, the devil can steal into your sincerity and make you live a mediocre and a weak life and mentor you into believing that God can allow you like that until you start scripture to see the character of God that he who did not spare his son he gave his son freely without thinking about it will he not much more give you all things to enjoy that if you being evil know how to give good gifts how much more will your heavenly father 
so immediately you know that that thing you think is god is the devil because you have judged by the character of god listen to me you know why it is important to read your bible it's more than just easing the guilt of feeling that you are not spiritual you read the bible so that you are exposed to god's character and then his methodologies his ways of doing things let me tell you this i don't mean to insult anyone you know i'm called to minister to the body of christ but there are many practices that may be sincere but we need to look at them from the lens of scripture in god's economy how results are produced are as important as the results themselves do not say it doesn't matter the most important thing is let there be results no there is a predefined methodology jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 it says to stand ye in the way even that old path it says to ask ask for the old path where is the good way when you find it walk therein and it will bring you into your sabbath hallelujah so we study scripture to know the character of god we study scripture to know the ways of god platform number two very quickly the second platform that helps us to know god in this kingdom are the names of god write it down please the names of god exodus chapter 3 we'll start from verse 13 down to 15. exodus chapter 3 this was moses having an encounter with the god of the bible in the burning bush until then he had not met the god of the hebrews remember that moses was raised an idol worshiper i hope you know look up i hope you know i hope you know that moses in his hedonistic state wrote books moses was a writer he wrote books that are still being used today books that teach i hope you know that moses was being trained to be the next pharaoh he was going to be the one to succeed pharaoh For you to be a pharaoh in Egypt, you had to be half man and half wizard. They would teach you the art of the constellations. They would teach you how to make the stars. They would teach you to, how to align planetary bodies for your advantage. They will teach you how to manipulate the elements of nature. What do you think Janus and Jambres were there for? They were not just magicians, they were lecturers. Hallelujah. It was from that standpoint that moses ran until he got married and was tending the sheep of his father-in-law jethro and then the bible says that he saw a bush that was burning and would not be consumed and moses said i will turn aside and see this great sight and when the lord saw that he had turned aside he said moses take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground and then the encounter continued now 3 verse 15 please and moses said unto god behold when i come to the children of israel and shall say unto them the god of your fathers hath sent me unto you and they shall say to me what is his name what shall i say unto them because you see god preserves his dimensions in his names don't forget this every dimension of god's glory is captured and preserved in a name every time he revealed himself in a certain way to the nation of israel they captured that dimension if they saw his supplies they captured it in a name called rafa and preserved it so any day they want to see that dimension again they will invoke rafa are we together if they saw his deliverance they called him sebaoth and captured that dimension and hid it so every time they were in war they would study the situation and study what name of god representing his dimension and they will invoke that name so moses is saying when i meet these people and i say i have come as a deliverer they will ask me what dimension of god did you encounter who sent you and you see pharaoh also had names that were preserved egypt had thousands of gods and all these gods had their assignments and they respected one another 
they were gods of fertility they were gods of agriculture they were gods of so on like we have in many you know traditions around africa we have gods that do this they specialize in this area that area each god has his requirement to invoke that dimension in him and god said give it to us please verse 13. moses you are asking what dimension of me you want to see i am that i am is a very dangerous name that means every other name they called me was simply your benefit for your benefit i am so mighty no man can fathom me but i decided to fragment myself into dimensions so that i can give men a chance to relate with me so sikenu is still jaira is still rafa but he broke his dimensions so that we can know him the same way both man and woman i hope you know that both man and woman are dimensions of god he separated himself number one for procreation but number two so that the clearest expression of god demonstrated on earth will be the relationship between a man and his wife it was god's design that the first example of god children will see is not a film it's not a pastor it's daddy and mommy so mommy is a dimension of god that's the reason why her and the holy spirit are both called helpers you see it is god who is at work in us both to will and to do that means when god wants to bless you the spirit of the lord will breathe upon you to invoke the dimension of him that should be made manifest all of him cannot show up you can't stand it no even in heaven he feels all things are we together so if it is a healing service god will move the worship ministers and they will find themselves singing songs that invoke that dimension they, they will find out that they are, he, he answers to his name the moment you begin to sing songs as we worship in your presence there is healing the holy spirit's gentle touch is blowing jesus i believe the holy spirit does not start prospering when you sing that kind of song no he will switch to that dimension of god that quickens and all of a sudden you find out that the dimension of god that is revealed based on what you invoked was healing when you know this it will help you to administer anointing because all of a sudden you find out that the worship leaders are singing songs that are around a pattern. They are being moved by the Holy Ghost because he wants to show up. And that's why as a worship minister you must be sensitive. Because there are times God wants to show up and he wants to use your songs to create the platform for him to come. Your spirit must be aligned enough to pick that signal. Are we together? When you watch men like Benny Hinn, when they are about to pray, they begin to sing all kinds of songs. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The atmosphere, the saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. And all of a sudden you see people rising from wheelchairs because they have created a portal for Rafa to come. You know God by his name. Watch this. That means if God calls you to walk in the healing ministry, the strongest dimension of his name that you will know is Rafa. He will create that bias so that you will excel in that dimension. Are we together? Yes. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The saints and the angels bow. 
the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy. So when God wanted to reveal a dimension of his living power, his El Shaddai dimension, he came upon men like Minister Prosper and suddenly said, the name is Ekweme. So he, what is it about a song with a name? And the name began to go from nation to nation, you see. And every time you sing that song with understanding, you will answer to the name. Oh, Listen to what you are singing. You are calling names. The names of Jesus reveal dimensions of Him. Next time you have a healing meeting, don't sing songs about God giving people money. You may be disappointed in that crusade because God will honor the dimension of Him you are provoking. Sing songs that will cause the spirit of grace to come in the dimension you are calling. If you are broke, don't sing songs of healing for your body. No. When you are trusting God to move in many dimensions, you begin to sing songs like "Way Make Miracle Walk from this light in the darkness that is who you are." That's all right. Our time is gone. The last for tonight, and we'll stop here. The third platform, and it truly is the greatest platform for knowing the Lord, knowing God, is Jesus himself, the Christ of God. Colossians 1 and verse 15, we have to pray. Colossians 1 and verse 15, the Bible calls Jesus the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Let me stop here for tonight. Let me explain to you what that means. That Jesus did not just come to save sinners alone. Jesus Christ came first as a correction to our interpretation of who God is. There are many things about God that men did not know because he operated in an invisible realm. So Satan and the mistake of prophets mixed together produce different kinds of views about God. When Jesus came, he came as God in the flesh. This is what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. That God is made manifest in the flesh. Are we together? So I look at Jesus as a representation of the character of God. Everything Jesus did truly is what God does. Everything Jesus did not do, no matter who credited it to God, is what God does not do. Are we together? So when the Bible says God is love, we can verify looking at Jesus. Did Jesus demonstrate love? We see love everywhere. Based on the revelation of God through Jesus, we can agree that it is true that God is love. God is a supplier. Is that true? We verify from the life of Jesus. So when you study Jesus, Jesus becomes the theological reference for vetting anything that was credited to God, good or bad. Do not forget this. If you do not know Jesus, you will be confused about God. Because God in the Bible referred to many things. And there were times they used the word Lord, L-O-R-D. It was used for men, it was used for kings, it was used for deities, and then it was used for God, Yahweh. So you would need Jesus to verify many things that were credited to God. God had no business in it. As revealed by Jesus. 
So we look at Jesus and we learn God. We look at Jesus and Jesus becomes like a lecture manual that begins to educate and edit and reorient our understanding about God. No matter what which prophet said, no matter what which saint of old said about God, if it is not captured in Jesus, we have a right to vet it. Jesus, the revelation of God. Are we together now? Yes. He came as the word that became flesh, the living logos of the Father. We'll continue next week. We have to pray. Rise up on your feet. Just pray a simple prayer in one minute. Lord, reveal yourself to me. As I study scripture, open me up to understand the character of God. As I study scripture, open me up to understand the methodologies of the kingdom. And then pray, reveal your names to me. Reveal your names. That they transcend songs, they transcend sermons. And then Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Let me study Jesus to know God. Let my confidence about God, the integrity of his person. Through Jesus you have a right to vet every statement that has been made about God. He came as the manifestation of God. He came to end the confusion and the superstition around God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Watch this. When Jesus came, he revealed the Father to us. The love of the Father. He demonstrated the love of the Father through the substitutionary sacrifice that he went through. He said, for God so loved the world, he proved it that God truly loved us by giving Jesus. And he says that whosoever believes in him, that that person whosoever will not perish, but have life everlasting. Tonight, I do not want us to end without giving our precious people an opportunity. There are people scattered inside, outside, following online from whatever nation. You need this Jesus who came to reveal the love of the Father. He didn't come to make religion out of people. He didn't come to make people religious people, no. He came as a testament of the love of the Father. Very quickly, you are here and you are saying, Apostle, as you were talking about knowing God and all through the worship, through the testimonies, I have seen a need for Jesus in my life. Wherever you are, or you are rededicating your life, if you are here and outside, just outside the, at the gallery, you are free to come to the front here. And then, for those who are outside, please, all the old, other, other overflows, I would request that you move to the front of your projector screen. So for all who are here, carry your bags, your Bible, everything you came to church with. As we celebrate you, please make your way to the front. Koinonia, celebrate, celebrate Jesus. Come. Come to Jesus. Win that war tonight. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Is there still someone who is saying, Apostle, I want to win that war tonight. God bless you. Leave your seat and come to Jesus. You may be the hope of your family. Do it for your destiny. Do it for your children. Do it for your children's children. God bless you. Koinonia, don't be tired. Celebrate them. You're connecting from any and every nation. You want to make Jesus Lord of your life. Follow me as I pray this prayer. The overflows. Celebrate them. There are people coming from everywhere. The Bible declares that he who will come to God, he will in no wise cast away. Thank you. Thank you so much for making this noble decision. Listen to me. It is the wisest decision that any man can make in this life. To submit to the Lordship of the Christ and to be a recipient of his life. I want to lead you in that simple but powerful prayer. Lift your right hand and please say after me, those in the overflow, please join them, those online following, 
join them. Say this truthfully speaking. Say this passionately. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Are we together? Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I love you and I believe in you that you are Savior, that you are Lord, that you are King. Tonight, I have heard your word. I make Jesus Lord of my life. Be my Savior. Be my King. From today and for the rest of my life, I obtain forgiveness. I obtain the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I reign in life. I declare that the power of sin, the power of Satan, the power of the grave is broken over my life. I am a recipient of the life of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you as always for these ones you have brought. May your grace keep them. Let this be a journey that will only be from glory to glory. I break the power of sin. I break the power of Satan. I break the power of the flesh from your life. And I declare that your path will be like the shining light, shining ever brighter, even unto the perfect day. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that you will guide you and you will turn you into signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God Hallelujah. Lembo Anthony is my name. And the word of the Lord in First Corinthians chapter 4 and in verse 20, it says, The kingdom of God is not in word but in power. We believe the word of the Lord has come to you, not just in words by the servant of the Lord, Apostle Joshua Selman, but also in the manifest demonstration of the power of the Lord. We'd like you to do well to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so as to stay in touch with the consistent uploads from Reflector Hub YouTube channel and also get to experience the demonstration of the power of the Lord. That as the word of the Lord comes to your life today, don't hesitate. Be a blessing, an extension of the power of the Lord to your family, to your friends, to your loved ones. Do well by sharing this video to every one of them and also bringing them into the light and the understanding of God's word that they also become partakers of this power. Thank you and God bless you.